So let us draw a simplified scheme of the spleen that will help us hopefully not to get lost in the real slides. The spleen is covered by a fibrous capsule which is pretty thick in spleen and it radiates into connective tissue trabecules, fibrous trabecules can find parts of these trabecules also inside because you don't see the connection with the surface because you're looking on a two-dimensional uh, section only that's where you will find also the trabecular arteries and trabecular veins now the uh, you will note that the inner space contains like ellipsoid structures with blood vessels. These are lymphoid follicles. Mostly there is a lighter center somewhere, it's a germ germinal center, and otherwise it's lymphocytes here, everywhere. Now let us follow the branching pattern of the trabecular arteries which are branches of the splenic artery. So this artery becomes surrounded by a sheath of lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, And there is another population of B lymphocytes. Of course, they look the same in the routine in the routine uh, staining. This is called a central artery. It's a branch of a trabecular artery. that will be trabecular vein into a trabecule trabecule which radiates from the fibrous capsule capsule okay and this is a lymphoid uh, follicle This is also a lymphoid follicle The central artery uh, sends also branches that are called marginal sinuses and the central artery is surrounded by a population of T lymphocytes abbreviated as PALS which stands for peri arteriolar sorry arteriolar lymphatic sheath uh, and it's uh, T lymphocytes okay but here there are B lymphocytes that are differentiating into plasma cells that are producing immunoglobulins into the sinuses. Once the central artery leaves the follicle, it's still surrounded by immune cells but then it undergoes branching into 
a series of so-called penicillate arteries or arterioles. These penicillar arterioles are surrounded by lymphocytes and macrophages. And they are each each of these arterioles is branching into uh, capillaries, and the capillaries have very wide openings among the endothel endothelial cells. So the formed blood elements, mainly the red blood cells, might escape before they get into the venous sinusoids the confluence of which forms the trabecular veins and the venous drainage of the spleen. So here are the capillaries, venous sinusoids, venules and so on. So this is the flow of blood. Now if we look more closely into this into into what happens here in the microcirculation, you would realize that through the gaps among the endothelial cells, the red blood cells are able to leave. It's called extravasation of blood. They are entering a labyrinth of connective tissue cells of the stroma, which is called Billroth's cords. And once they pass the labyrinth, they can enter the venous sinusoids and, f and leave uh, the spleen. So this is a highly permeable capillary. that lets some of the red blood cells to pass among the endothelial cells because there are spaces among the uh, endothelial cells that's how the red blood cells get among the Billerod's cords that form kind of a labyrinth here. These are fibroblasts arranged in splenic or Billerod's cords. And hopefully they will find their way into the uh, venous blood sinusoids. Uh, this is called so called uh, this is called the open circulation. When the 
foreign blood elements are really leaving the blood vessels and wandering through the uh, stroma for a while. That's why the spinning cords work as a filter, because elderly red blood cells are not deformable so easily, so they get stuck here, they cannot bend, or when they try to, to bend, they rupture, they undergo hemolysis. So uh, the old uh, red blood cells are phagocytized by macrophages that are waiting here to consume the fragments of the red blood cells. All the red blood cells that get stuck here. Moreover, we got also plasma cells here that are producing immunoglobulins. Okay, in this labyrinth. There's also so called closed circulation, which means some of the uh, arterial capillaries directly continue into the venous capillaries, so the, so the foreign blood elements may easily pass through. So both mechanisms occur in the human spleen. Now, this whole complex is called the uh, red splenic pulp and the red splenic pulp is everywhere among the, follic the follicles. So this is the red splenic pulp. And the sum of the lymphoid follicles is called the white pulp. White splenic pulp. We look more closely on the lymphoid follicles. They look a little bit different than the lymphoid follicles in the lymph nodes or tonsils. It's this uh, central arteriole that is surrounded by the periarterial lymphatic sheath. Then there is uh, marginal zone with less lymphocytes but more macrophages then there is a more densely looking mantle zone with densely populated uh, lymphocytes and there's the germinal center with the proliferating central blasts. So, so this is the central arteriole. It's surrounded by the periarterial lymphatic sheath of the T lymphocytes. And here we have the marginal zone. There are more macrophages. And dendritic cells. So these are antigen presenting cells. Here is the darker mantle zone.
darker due to the density of the lymphocytes. And here is the germinal center. which is uh, more pale with the proliferating central blasts. These are B lymphoblasts. So we, we can say that uh, the lymph, uh, sorry, the blood is being filtered here. Its antigens are offered to T lymphocytes, antigen presenting cells and B lymphocytes. Uh, the B lymphocytes are producing uh, immunoglobulins here and so the uh, white pulp of the spleen plays a s uh, similar role for filtration of antigens and immune response against these antigens as the uh, lymph node plays for the lymph. One more note to the red splenic pulp. Uh, the reason why the uh, elderly red blood cells cannot pass so easily, why they are fragile or less flexible, is that without the nucleus they cannot renew their proteins, including the proteins responsible for maintaining the flexibility and deformability of the uh, plasma membrane. So that's why young red blood cells pass easily, more easily than the old red blood cells.